the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be to Brothers and sisters, as we know, this is the first Sunday of Great Lent. I mean, last year, the first week of Great Lent. Most of us have had experiences and perhaps we have prayed more, perhaps we have not. Perhaps we have fasted, perhaps we have not. Perhaps we have wanted to follow God and fallen away from His promised blessings many times. Perhaps. But God forgives. We come this morning on this day of the Sunday of Orthodoxy and we proclaim the, the, the Orthodox faith. Every year on this day we proclaim the Orthodox faith. What in the world does that mean? Why do we do this? You know, in the in the eighth century, there was a great controversy that arose, and most of it came from the influence of Islam, but which uh, people began to say, "What is the deal with all these icon, these images we have?" It says, "Thou shalt make no graven images before me, or bow down and worship any of these things." So what's the deal with all this? And people began to have doubts and feelings about this, and pretty soon there arose a great controversy, and I mean a huge controversy, where they began to remove icons from the church, break them into pieces, burn them. This raged for over a hundred years. Until finally, in, well, the number I have is 843. It was a long time ago. They had an ecumenical council. They proclaimed that icons were indeed not only legal and good, but they proclaimed the Orthodox faith. And without them, we don't have our faith. How in the world can that be? What is our faith based upon? What is orthodoxy based upon? What is the teaching and the truth of orthodoxy based upon? That God became a man and walked among us. He taught us. He was a human being, being also fully God and fully man. And if he walked among us and was a man, then he can surely be depicted. And if we deny that, if we burn icons or we do not allow them to be in the church to be venerated as a window into heaven, we are denying that Jesus actually became a man and became a human being. And this was the whole crux of the controversy. Of course, thank God that it was overthrown. Now, brothers and sisters, when we think of icons, you know, all of us have icons in our houses. Our churches are full of icons. Even to most of us, to some degree, it's a complete mystery that these images are windows into heaven. And that they have some, some uh, effect upon us. I'm going to tell you an absolute true story. I have several about icons, but this is the one that's about 10 years ago, maybe not quite, a young man called me and said, could I speak to you? And I said, certainly. And he came to church. I met with him. We talked for, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour or so about the Orthodox Church and the Orthodox faith and etc. And I, uh, before he left, I gave him a blessing and I said, wait a minute. And I went upstairs and I got an icon of the Mother of God and I gave it to him. And I said, here, take this home with you. And I think I gave him an icon of Jesus too. And he said, thank you, and left. He was going home for the summer. He was a college student uh, at Concordia, and he was going home to work on the farm. His dad was a farmer, and he was going to work all summer on the farm, and they come back. Well, in the fall, he came and said, can I talk to you? And I said, absolutely. 
So he came and he met with me, and he told me this story. He said, Father, when I came to you last uh, uh, fall and or summer, spring, and, and, um, and talked to you, he said, we had a class, and the professor brought an icon, and he said it in the middle of the class. And he said, we're not going to discuss this. It was an art class. He says, we're not going to discuss this. We're not going to talk about it. We're just going to look at it. We're going to admire it. We're going to allow it to have its effect on us. And he said, you know, me being a good, strong, rah-rah, shish kumba Lutheran, and that's what he said. I'm not making that up. He said, he sit there and he looked at this icon. And he began to go, what in the world is this all about? She's just a woman. Why am I looking at this? Maybe she wasn't just a woman. Maybe she, maybe she actually did give birth to God. What does that mean? And his mind went all over the place. And he said at the end of that class, he said, I did not know what to do. I had to talk to someone. And the only thing I could think of was to talk to an Orthodox priest who could probably help me with this. And he says, and I came to talk to you, and you were very kind and, and uh, you know, answered my questions, the ones that I had. And then you came and you gave me the exact icon that was sitting in the class. To make a long story short, he became Orthodox Christian. His wife became, he, he got married, his wife became an Orthodox Christian. They have four children, they're Christ, Orthodox Christians. And... It changed his life is the whole point. That image of the mother of God changed him in one hour for good. So brothers and sisters, when we think of holy images and icons, they certainly do open up another world for us. And each and every one of us stand together, having been baptized, chrismated, raised up, and we are in the image of God, restored to the grace given unto us. Of course, we certainly fall. And we do things which mar that image once again, and we must confess it before God, who is a forgiving and loving God. But brothers and sisters, we stand together as images before the Creator in His image and likeness. And that's why when the priest comes out and he, and he senses the icons in the church, he senses you. Because you are in the image and likeness of God. Sanctified, raised up, baptized, chrismated, given the grace. Because Jesus, the Lord, the Son of the living God, the second of the person of the Trinity, the Christ, came into this world and became a man and walked with us. He then died and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. He took human nature and sanctified it, raised it up to the level of sitting at the right hand of God. So brothers and sisters, on this day of holy orthodoxy, the Sunday of orthodoxy, let us not forget these things. Thank God for our faith. Thank God that he came and gave his life for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.